as inflation and interest rates come down, and tonight another record high in the stock market. The Dow closing above 43,000 for the first time ever today. Mary Bruce leading us off at the state of this race. She's in Erie, Pennsylvania tonight. Tonight, 22 days until the election, and Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are both in the must-win state of Pennsylvania. Our new ABC News Ipsos poll tonight showing the race in a dead heat nationally. Harris 50, Trump 48 among likely voters. But this election will be decided in the key battleground states where the race is also essentially tied. Tonight, signs Harris is closing the gap on the economy as inflation and interest rates are coming down and the stock market hitting another all-time record high today. The Dow up 200 points, closing for the first time above 43,000. Trump tonight outside Philadelphia is turning to the economy. Harris tonight focused on the economy, too. In western Pennsylvania, making the case that her policies will help middle America and trying to reach out to black voters. Stopping at a black-owned business in Erie today. She's upping her outreach to black men in particular, a key constituency for Harris. There is a very big difference between Donald Trump and how I will be president of the United States. And I cannot impress upon people enough that... This is somebody, Donald Trump, who intends to take us backward. And saying this about earning votes from black Americans. Black men are no different from anybody else. They expect that you have to earn their vote. And that's why I'm out here doing the work that I'm doing about talking with folks, listening with folks, because I'm running for president of the United States. And it is incumbent on me to earn the support. Harris also trying to reach out to conservative voters who aren't happy with Trump, now agreeing to sit down with Fox News in Pennsylvania later this week, part of a blitz of interviews. It comes as she's ramping up the pressure on Trump, questioning his age and mental fitness, challenging him to another debate, but Trump repeatedly refusing. Harris releasing her detailed medical records this weekend and asking Trump, who would be the oldest president ever to take the oath of office, why he isn't doing the same. It makes you wonder... To hide away. One last question. One last question. Are they afraid that people will see that he is too weak and unstable? turn the page. Trump's campaign instead pointing to a three-paragraph letter from his personal doctor released last November. And tonight saying it's Harris who should pass a test on cognitive stamina. On the campaign trail, Trump this weekend stepping up his anti-immigrant rhetoric and suggesting he might use the military against, quote, radical left lunatics on election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the big, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or if really necessary, by the military, uh, that, because they can't let that happen. The Harris campaign saying this should alarm every American who cares about their freedom and security. What Donald Trump is promising is dangerous, and returning him to office is simply a risk Americans cannot afford. And Harris is expected to address Trump's comments about the military here at her rally in Erie tonight. The two of them are now separated by less than a point here in Pennsylvania, and both campaigns know their best chance to win the White House is to win this state, David. No question about that, Mary. This is extraordinarily close, 22 days out. Mary, thank you. We turn now to the alarming threats against FEMA workers after weeks of dangerous misinformation about FEMA's response to these hurricanes. Tonight, the news coming in, there has been an arrest amid the threats targeting the workers, a suspect now arrested with multiple guns. Here's ABC's Victor Akendo. After weeks of misinformation about FEMA's response to recent hurricanes, tonight a man arrested for allegedly threatening FEMA workers in North Carolina. Threats like this forcing the agency to shift how it's responding to the disaster. Authorities arresting 44-year-old William Parsons this weekend, accusing him of threatening FEMA workers, saying he was in possession of a handgun and rifle at the time of the arrest. After receiving multiple threats, FEMA saying it has relocated its workers to secured centers, rather than going door-to-door -door in some communities 
decimated by Hurricane Helene. President Biden has railed against former President Trump for spreading lies about the FEMA response to the storms, suggesting there could be a political price for those lies. I think those who have been spreading these lies to try to undermine the opposition are going to pay a price for it. And here in Florida tonight, authorities warning residents about the dangers that could be lurking in the floodwaters, including alligators and snakes. A family finding this gator in their garage. Power outages, long gas lines, and lingering flooding hampering the response to Hurricane Milton. This is what the Silver Oaks neighborhood in Zephyr Hills, Florida looks like five days after Milton hit. It is under waist-deep water. Residents tell me some 50 homes have been impacted. That family there, they're removing what they can from their flooded home, and this water hasn't receded at all. The Curtis family now salvaging their prized possessions from their dream home by boat. What has this been like for you? It's devastating. Devastating. Looking back at your home. Yeah. Devastating. So trying to salvage what we can. Cherished memories from years ago. Our entire life. And David, tonight, crews like this one are racing to restore power to the region. Most utility companies hoping to have everyone back online by the end of the week. David? Victor Akendo and the team staying on these hurricanes in the aftermath.